Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I was able to recreate this pretty cool Instagram effect I found on this website right here. So if you keep scrolling down the website, you're gonna notice that there's this Instagram feed right down here. So I wanted to recreate this um, using very little code. So if you look at the source code of this website, this is all done in like JavaScript. So I wanted to do this uh, much easier rather than just having to hand code everything in JavaScript. So I decided to recreate this exact effect using Slide Revolution. So here's an example of what I was able to pull off using just Slide Revolution. You can see when you hover over each one of these Instagram posts, it's automatically playing a video. So when you first look at this example right here, you probably think this is simple, but there's actually a lot of kind of different things going on in this. So as you can see, when you hover over this, it grows while all of the other ones shrink and lower the opacity, and then it auto plays. So it's doing a lot of different things at once. And honestly, when I first looked at this, I thought this would be pretty simple to pull off, but it's pretty complicated uh, once you kind of get your hands on this. So I'm gonna show you how I was able to do, like I said, everything in Slider Revolution, and I'm gonna give you the simplest way to pull this effect off. In order to keep this video a lot shorter, I won't be covering the basics of Slide Revolution. So this is gonna be more of like an overview on how I pulled this off. So you're gonna to have to already have some experience with how Slider Revolution works and the interface. So let's just jump into the first step. The first step you need to do is go to your Instagram post and download the videos. So in this situation, we have a traveling Instagram. And as you can see, this is a video post right here that we created. So the most time consuming part of this is actually doing that exact same thing because uh, in this example, I just have four different posts. So what you need to do is, like I said, go to each one of your Instagram posts and download the video. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but I actually found a really simple way to do it. So what you do is you go to your Instagram post like this, copy this URL, and then I found this website right here. Um, there's tons of other websites where you can download your video. So it's just like it says, uh, Instagram video downloader. And you just click download. And then what it's going to do is, it might take a little bit of time. It says up to 30 seconds. And what this does is it kicks out an MP4 file. And then you can download that. Then the next step is you need to use something like Adobe Media Encoder and compress that down even more. Because what you will notice is when you hover over each one of these, it's playing a video. And the best practice is to always get your video uh, as small as you can. So each one of these videos are one megabyte or less. So that's why you need to re-compress uh, it using something like Adobe Media Encoder. Uh, I won't be covering that because that's like a whole other type of a tutorial, but just know that what I did is I went to each one of these. And as you can see, when the video is done, you just click this download button. That's step one is to do download the videos then the next step is to recreate these thumbnails in something like Photoshop. So that's what I did here. I have four different uh, Instagram posts. So really what I did is I went back to my Instagram uh, feed on my phone and then I just took a screenshot of it. And when you do that, it automatically adds that header right here where it says must love traveling. It adds those little header with the three dots. So it looks like it's a real post. So that was the next thing I did is Go to my phone on these four posts, take a screenshot, and then send it to myself. So what I found out is that actually was very time consuming. It may seem simple, but it's kind of a pain in the butt because you got to do download the video, recompress it, take screenshots, do that. So yeah, that's why I said sometimes when you look at things on the internet, it looks simple, but it's a pain in the butt. Like this probably took them a couple hours to do all of these. So that's step one. Once you have all of your assets, then you can jump into Slide Revolution. I'll show you the next step. And here we are in Slide Revolution. And like I said, I already have everything set up. This is just more of like an overview on how you could pull off this effect. So what I did is I just went into add layer and then I did a video layer. So each one of these is just a video layer. And then I just put them on the page, you know, using the uh, position and size right here. And as you can see right here, the width of each one of these is 228, height is 406. So like I said in the beginning, I made sure that the videos were compressed to that resolution and that's gonna help a lot for file size. Um, so if I go underneath content right here, um, all you need to do is just make sure it's clicked on as an HTML5 video. 
and then just upload each one of these videos right here. And I'll show you right here that I have them called Must Love One. And you can see right here where my mouse is. I just have it as like six seconds and it's all under one megabyte. Um, I think one of them is a little bit more than one megabyte, but what I do recommend is keeping them small because this one right here is 930 kilobytes and one megabyte. Because the way it works with Slider Revolution is it's gonna load up these videos once it loads up that section of the page. So it's automatically gonna download about four megabytes for the user. So if page performance is something that you really need to consider, this might not be the best option because these are videos and they have to load when the user sees them. So that's what I did right there for each one of these. It's just an HTML5 uh, video or MP4. So if you could see right here, it's just an MP4 file. And then what I did for the uh, poster image, which is this image right here, I just went in and uploaded those screenshots. Like I said, I took my phone and those are pretty small too. And you, let me see if I can uh, click on these right here. So what I do recommend is definitely use WebP now, and you can see that these are uh, at the right dimension, so 229 by 407, 26 kilobytes, 20 kilobytes, 29. So yeah, don't upload like a five megabyte image because it's just gonna kill your performance. Uh, I will let you know that Slider Revolution does have a really cool feature now because they are really taking uh, file size and page performance serious. So when you hover over the save feature, they have this thing called optimized file size. And when you click that, it's gonna pull up this chart right here. So this is pretty cool. Um, what it's gonna do is it can give you recommendations of, um, they have an information right here. I won't go too deep into it, but basically I have all of my images sized correctly and they're at 21 kilobytes. But if you click this, it will save even a little bit more. You can see it's gonna go down to 10 kilobytes if you pull in the standard 1X size. So you can even save more. And then this is all it takes to load up Slider Revolution now. So it's no longer like this bloated software. You can see right here, this is as big as it is right here. And that's just kind of like an overview of how you can save a little bit more space on your images. So once you have all of your video layers in here and you have your poster, uh, the next thing I recommend is go under attributes right here and add the CSS class. Um, so each one of these has the same CSS class. This is gonna be needed for the next step. We need to make sure that each one of these has a class because we need to trigger that hover effect and we can only do that when you are assigned a class. So in this case, I just called it Instagram card. The next step is go underneath your module general options and click right here where it says CSS. And I'm going to leave a link to this code in the description below. So you can just click that and download this code and just paste it in and it should work as is. So I'll go through this code and what it's doing. So the very first one is, let me remove this code so I can show you what's happening. If you don't have that little bit of CSS code in here, when you mouse over each one of these videos, you're going to notice the cursor goes to that pointer. So you don't really want that. You want it to look like that if that makes sense. So you see how it looks like it's given the user the ability to click on something. That's just like a slider revolution default code. So once you put that code in here, right, uh, cursor equals auto, it's going to automatically always keep it at this pointer. So it's not going to look like the user can click on anything. So I figured once you add that in there, that helps with that hover effect. And then the next code is this right here is what we're going to be looking at. If you remember from before, we just added that class called Instagram card. And what I'm doing is you need to make sure that the transform is at a scale of one. So that means basically 100%. Because if you notice right here, we're scaling up and down with these other codes. So we need to tell it with CSS, scale at one. And then in a lot of cases, I've noticed you have to add this important to it. Um, and then the transition, we're just doing it where it's easing in and out at 0.2 seconds. And then this is optional. If you don't want a box shadow, you don't need to put that on here. Um, but I do have a cool website for how I was able to pull that off. And I'll show you that right now. Here's a link to how you can pull off a really cool box shadow. So if you go right here and you start to play around with the different settings, you can reduce how strong it is. You can have it darker. So this is a really cool website. And what it's doing is it's really creating these custom drop shadows. So that's where, that's where I was able to get this code right here. So like I said, box shadows are optional and it 
you don't really see it in Slender Revolution if you have a transparent background. So once you click on preview, you're going to see the background right here a little bit better. But you could also just hit save. And then if you have this um, short code already enabled on your page like this, you can really see it on the white background. So that's what I did right here. As you can see, that's the box shadow right here. The next step is you click on your layer and click on actions. And this is kind of where a lot of the magic is happening. You'll notice there's a whole bunch of different things going on. It looks complicated, but once I walk you through it, it's really simple. So if you aren't familiar with what an action is in Slender Revolution, it's basically you can tell the browser to do a lot of different things in Slider Revolution. So in this case, when the mouse enters this video or image, have it do something. So right now, like I said in the beginning, it's doing a couple different things. It's automatically playing the video when you play, and then it's triggering a certain CSS class to these other ones to do something. So let me show you what I have everything set up. So the very first thing you need to do is click on add action since you don't already have anything in here. But in this case, I already clicked add action and I have all of these different actions right here. So the very first one is start media. So you can see right here when the interaction is mouse enter, start media. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of different options in here. But what you need to do is go underneath where it says media actions and start media. And what that's gonna do is target this layer right here, start video one. And I don't have any action uh, delays or anything like that. And then what you need to do is every time it does something, whether it be mouse enter or leave, you need to tell it to do something. So then when the mouse is leaving, stop the media. So you can see right here, interaction, mouse equals leave, stop media, video one. Okay, so now if you just have that, it will automatically just play the video and not shrink any of these other ones. The next step I had to do was go ahead and tell it for video two, three, and four to do something as well. And in this case, it's called toggle class. And what this is going to do is when you mouse enter video one, have it toggle the class for video two. I know it's a little complicated, but let just follow and then you're, you'll make a lot more sense. So when the user is mouse entering this right here, video one, toggle a class, you can see right here underneath layer actions, toggle class. And you wanna target number two in this case, which is this one right here, video number two. And then right where my mouse is, that's video three and video four. So have it where when the mouse enters, toggle, for layer two, this class right here called card hover. Now let me jump into that CSS we just copied and pasted so you can see what it's doing. So as you can see right here, I have this special class called Instagram card and card hover. It's gonna transform to a scale of 0 0.9. So that's why it's shrinking down and I'm changing the opacity to like 0 0.3. So that's what it's doing right here this one right here for the video too, if you keep an eye on it, that's scaling down to 0.9 and adding an opacity of 0.3. That makes sense? So you hover over that, it's doing scaling down and 0.3 opacity. That's what this code is doing. And then it's also doing another thing right here called Instagram card hover is transform 1.2. So you can see right here when you hover over this one right here, it's automatically scaling up to 1.2. So it's no longer at, right now it's at one. When I hover over, it's 1.2. These go to 0.9. That's why I said in the beginning, you may think that when you see stuff like this, it's simple to do, but you kind of have to do three things at once. So that's what all of this code is doing. It's literally doing three things at once. It's scaling 1.2 for hover. All the other cards are going to 0.9 and then it always has to default back to something. So that's why this code right here is very important as well. Always has to animate to something. So let me go back into the actions and we'll cover what else is in here. And like I said, when the mouse is leaving, you wanna turn off that class of hover. So on video two, when someone hovers over it, it's going to take off that card hover. And then all you have to do from that point on is just hit this duplicate button and then just do that for all of the other videos. So in this case, uh, you wanna do it for video three as well. So 
let me move this over here so you can better see. So when the user is hovering over the first video right here, it's also gonna toggle that class on and off right here. So where it says video three, you wanna have it where it leaves, turn that off. Same thing for video four. And what's cool is you can see right here when you click on video four, you're gonna notice that it's gonna highlight it right here. So it's kind of easier to see. So you wanna make sure that you're selecting the right um, videos. And if you aren't familiar with where it's pulling this video one, two, three, and four name from, it's right here. If you see, when you click on a layer, this is the name of the layer right here. So video one, when I click on here, that's video two, three, and four. So if you have some weird names, always want to you always want to make sure you have your layer names really organized because it's going to make your life a lot easier on this actions panel so that's basically how you pull it off is the actions tab is going to be the most important part and as you can see when i click on video two um, i'll quickly go through everything right here but it's basically just a duplicate of everything that we just talked about in uh, the first video right here but i just duplicate these tabs so in this case we have it where video two which is what is selected right here when you enter, start the media for video two. When you leave the mouse, stop the media for layer two. And then you can see right here, this is the toggle class for all of the other ones besides video two. So now we have a toggle class for number one. So enter, toggle this class card hover. When you leave, turn off the class card hover. And same thing for video three and then video four. And then, yeah, same thing. So if you just click on the third one right here, click actions, it plays the video for three. And then it toggles all the other classes besides number three. So we got one, two, and four. And then same thing right here. Four is the same thing. So it's pretty simple once you kind of understand how the actions work inside of Slide Revolution. And like I said, that's the most important component to all of this is making sure that all of your actions are working correctly and your, all of your class names are matched up. So if you start to run into any issues, just go back into your CSS right here. Make sure that all of your class names are correct. If you're not using uh, Instagram card or card hover, you're going to want to make sure that everything is matching up here correctly and it all should work. And that's it. So once you have everything done, you just go ahead and copy this short code right here and just put it into your WordPress website. Um, that's what I like about Slide Revolution. You're not tied to any specific page builder. You can add this to, into any WordPress website that takes a short code. And then if you are concerned about how it's gonna look on mobile, you can always go into your uh, different settings right here. So if you go underneath layout, um, let's say in this case, I wanted to enable it for mobile. You can go ahead right here, click the on and when you go to mobile you can change how it's positioned you can change the sizes um, now what I did notice what's pretty cool about mobile and the way Slutter Revolution handles this when the user clicks on this on mobile it pulls up the video in full screen so it's playing like a native um, full screen version of the video um, at least on my iOS device that's what I tested it on I haven't tested it on uh, Androids really but when you click it it'll automatically pull up the video in full screen and then you can just minimize it and then you can go back to the other video and that's it for this slide of revolution video make sure that you give it a like subscribe to this youtube channel and hit that bell to receive notifications when i release new tutorials like this again this is mark from wiki design